It is a free note-taking application by Microsoft, and it is available on all these platforms, including iPadOS. When you first open OneNote, you will be asked to sign in with your Microsoft account, as OneNote uses Microsoft OneDrive to sync your notes between devices. Once you have your account set up, you will have a notebook created with your name. OneNote organizes your notes based on notebooks and you can create multiple notebooks for different areas of your life. To add some personal touch, you can also change the color of these notebooks. Once you are in your notebook, you can create sections in that notebook. I like to think of sections as projects, which can then contain multiple pages, which is where you have this unlimited canvas for taking notes. If that's not enough organization for you, you can create subpages for more detailed topics. Other than that, if you want, you can password protect a section, but I'm not sure how secure password protection is on OneNote. But at least you know if someone borrows your iPad or something, they won't be able to take a peek at your deepest and darkest secrets. You can create more notebooks by tapping on the add button on the bottom of the notebook navigation panel and you can do the same for sections and pages. Once you're done with the notebook, you can choose to close that notebook to keep the clutter to a bare minimum in your navigation panels. Just so you know, closing a notebook is not the same thing as deleting a notebook. It just means that notebook is not being synced with that device alone. If you want to delete a notebook, you need to navigate to your OneDrive and delete the actual OneNote notebook file from there. Getting back to OneNote's UI, you have the search icon on the top left along with the undo and redo buttons. On the right corner, you have the notifications panel, which will display any notifications about modifications that are done to your notes by other users. Moving on to the notes section, when you create a new page on OneNote, you are presented with a completely blank canvas. This is an almost unlimited white space that you can choose to use however you want. You can change the background color of your page if you don't like this plain white. You can also choose to handwrite notes in a grid or a ruled kind of paper. One of the best things about OneNote is that it doesn't force you to take notes from left to right and top to bottom. Instead, it allows you to tap on whatever area you want to type in and it lets you take notes in that area. This is an extremely useful feature for people who like mind maps, people who have a ton of images that they want to label or take handwritten notes on type notes. You are also able to simply grab a block of text and move it from one area to another without any issues. If you already have a bunch of text typed up, you can go to the draw tab and tap on add space to separate them into multiple sections. Once you've placed multiple text boxes all over the place, you can tap on the page width button to see all the content on your page and you can tap on 100% to go back to the default size of your page. This ability to place multiple text boxes haphazardly might not appeal to most people but I can think of at least one scenario where this feature comes in handy. So OneNote allows you to use images as background. You can take a picture of a form that you have to fill and set that as a background for your note. Now, when you want to type in a certain area of that form, all you need to do is type somewhere near that area and start typing. And if you can't nail the position of the text on your first try, you can simply grab the entire block of text and move it around to exactly match your image. Getting back to typing notes, you have access to a bunch of formatting options. You can switch between multiple predefined text styles ranging from headings, code blocks, quotes, and titles. If you use a keyboard with your iPad, you have access to a bunch of keyboard shortcuts. Some of the common ones such as Command Z for undo, Command Shift Z for redo, and Command F to search through your notes definitely work, but there are some more that can be found by holding the command key. Some of my favorites from that menu would be the ability to highlight the current paragraph with Command 4 or to start the current paragraph with Command 2, which is called tagging in OneNote Speed. Speaking of tagging, it supports a bunch of other tags which can be accessed from your home tab. So if you tap on this drop down, you can see a bunch of tags that are available to you and you can use it as you please. OneNote also has some text editing shortcuts that are common between any Microsoft Office application. So if you use Command U to underline and Command B to make your text bold on Microsoft Word, all those habits will carry forward here without any issues. You can also use an asterisk, asterisk, 
asterisk. I don't know how to say that word, but you get the point. You press that, followed by a space, to get a new bulleted list. One of the best features of OneNote is doing math calculations without having to do anything. All you need to do is type the expression and type the equal sign and press space. OneNote would automatically understand that it is a math calculation and it will calculate the result for you and put it where your cursor is. I haven't tested this out a whole lot, but in my experience it works with some complex functions as well, including square roots, cube roots, or some trig functions. Along with the exceptional note-taking experience with a keyboard, OneNote on iPad also offers full support for Apple Pencil. Once you have your pencil connected to your iPad, you can navigate to the draw tab on the menu bar. Here you can select the type of inking tool you would want to use and start taking handwritten notes right away. All the benefits of having unlimited canvas in all directions still work here for you. And you can choose to move back and forth between areas to link different aspects of your notes. You can choose from multiple colors of pens and highlighters. Although OneNote shows you a few options by default, but they can be edited, removed, or reordered to fit your needs. And if you don't like any of them and would rather have different presets, you can simply create a new pen or a highlighter configuration that will sit in this draw tab for easy access. One of the things that I believe is worth talking about is how the highlighter functionality works on OneNote. When you highlight text, typed or handwritten, it realizes that text takes priority over the highlighter and moves the highlighter to a layer behind the text. This makes sure your text has 100% visibility no matter how many layers of highlighter you have on top of it. Although all your handwritten notes appear as squiggly lines on the surface on the surface level, but OneNote continues to run handwriting recognition in the background and indexes your notes. This enables OneNote to look through type and handwritten notes when you search for a simple keyword. Other than being able to recognize your handwriting, OneNote can also make your shapes look perfect. All you need to do is enable ink to shape and it will start recognizing the shape that you draw and turn it into a perfect version of that exact shape. Another feature that OneNote offers for note takers is the Researcher tool. Researcher is a tool inside of OneNote that allows you to search for people, events, and concepts. Once you find any relevant information, it can be quickly dragged into your note and you can create proper citation based on the source of the information. OneNote can also be used as an extremely versatile knowledge management tool. It allows you to capture information directly into OneNote and you can import information from other sources. For instance, if you're taking notes on your iPad in a meeting and you want to capture an image on your phone, you can drag that image into OneNote and start using that as a reference. This is also true when it comes to other forms of media including audio, video, and PDF files. You can also use OneNote as a checklist manager where you can create and store checklists. To write down a checklist, all you need to do is to have a list of actions and then you can simply tap on this checklist button to convert it into a checklist. OneNote also has the ability to create shared notebooks. You can simply tap on the share icon on the top right and share a complete notebook with someone else. This will allow them to not only work in collaboration with you, but you will also see their initials next to the part that they have edited when you get back to your notes to avoid any confusion. OneNote does not allow you to link multiple notes on iPad, but you have that functionality on macOS and Windows. Instead, there is a hack that allows you to create new notes that will be linked by default. If you enclose the name of your new note in two square brackets, it will create a new note and link it to the text you just typed in square brackets. This is a handy tool if you can anticipate the need for linking notes, but it sucks that you cannot link existing notes. I'm on the test flight version of this application and the last version that brought any new features were brought dark mode and drag and drop functionality, which was first announced in August 2019. People have been sending requests for features to Microsoft such as searchable tags since early 2017 and there has been no response from Microsoft on those requests. That's the same case for linking notes, multi-window functionality, handwriting to text functionality, ability to create template notes in a section, ability to create templates in a section, audio recording while typing, section groups, support for shortcuts app, 
or some form of automation platform, and many more. Microsoft has shown little to no interest in addressing those concerns, which is why I can never recommend this application to a power user. And I personally have switched to Notion temporarily for the same reason. If you just need a simple application to take notes, then OneNote could be a great application for you.